In George Orwell's 1984, the authoritarian government, called the Party, uses emotional and fear-inducing rhetoric in the speeches of their poster boy, Big Brother. Big Brother's catastrophic hold on the minds of the civilians of Oceania is in part because of his use of fear-inducing language. These tactics of public speaking have been used throughout history and are still being used today. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines rhetoric as the art of speaking or writing effectively, such as the study of principles and rules of composition formulated by critics of ancient times, or the study of writing or speaking as a means of communication or persuasion. Political rhetoric has the same fundamental rules as regular rhetoric, but focuses more on the study of persuasion within public speaking. Aristotle's treatise on rhetoric tells us that there are three kinds of rhetoric, forensic, epideactic, and deliberative. Forensic rhetoric focuses on past judgments, epideactic makes a proclamation about the present, but the most influential form of rhetoric is deliberative. Deliberative rhetoric focuses on the future and is most commonly used by politicians. There are three kinds of deliberative rhetoric, ethos, logos, and pathos. Ethos is convincing your audience of your credibility. Logos is the use of logic or reason. Finally, pathos. Pathos appeals to emotion and is most seen throughout 1984. Pathos is not inherently good or bad, but instead is sporadic and unpredictable. It can rally people to peace as well as war. Most advertising uses pathos by highlighting our insecurities and then promising a cure. Big Brother uses pathos during the two minutes of hate by rallying a crowd against a common villain, Emmanuel Goldstein, so much so that he does not even have to say anything, just his presence is enough to convince a crowd of his morality. There have been many occurrences of politicians sparking emotion through political rhetoric. The most detrimental example will be the Holocaust and Adolf Hitler's use of anti-Jew propaganda and language that ultimately led to the genocide of over 6 million innocent people. Hitler attracted a large number of German followers by playing into the anger and helplessness they felt after the Treaty of Versailles. He was able to turn their outrage toward the Jewish community and Marxists, which are communists and social democrats. Hitler tailored his speeches to each individual audience he spoke to. For example, when talking to businessmen, Hitler strode away from his anti-Semitic views, talked more about his anti-communism views. Der Völkerstreit oder Hass untereinander, er wird gepflegt von ganz bestimmten Interessenten. Es ist eine kleine, wurzellose, internationale Clique, die die Völker gegeneinander hetzt die nicht will, dass sie zur Ruhe kommen. Es sind das die Menschen, die überall und nirgends zu Hause sind, die nirgends einen Boden haben, auf dem sie gewachsen sind, sondern die heute in Berlin leben, morgen genauso gut in Brüssel sein können, übermorgen in Paris und dann wieder in Prag oder in Wien oder in London und die sich überall zu Hause fühlen. Es sind die Einzigen, die wirklich als internationale Elemente anzusprechen sind, weil sie überall ihre Geschäfte betätigen können. Aber das Volk kann ihnen ja nicht nachfolgen. Das Volk ist ja gekettet an seinen Boden, ist ja gekettet an seine Heimat, ist ja gebunden an die Lebensmöglichkeiten seines Staates, der Nation. Another less drastic example is Harry Anslinger and the War on Drugs. Harry Anslinger was the first commissioner of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics, FBN, which laid the foundation for the DEA. He was also the starting point for the War on Drugs. Before Anslinger became the commissioner for FBN, cannabis was completely legal. Pharm pharmacies would even sell it as an over-the-counter drug, and cannabis was not hurting many people. Thousands of more people were dying from alcohol and tobacco every year than the people who were dying from cannabis. So Anslinger's original idea was to focus on narcotics, such as cocaine and heroin. Unfortunately for Anslinger, there was only a small majority of people who were using narcotics, hardly enough to keep an entire department open. So Anslinger turned his focus onto all drugs, instead of just narcotics. He passed the Marijuana Tax Act in 1927 that outlawed cannabis. In his own words regarding cannabis, Anslinger stated that young people are slaves to this narcotic, continuing addiction until they deteriorate mentally, become insane, turn to violent crime, and murder.
Even though this was proven to be factually incorrect, the Nixon administration started the war on drugs. Nixon's own advisor even stated, We knew we couldn't make it illegal to be either against the war or black, but by getting the public to associate the hippies with marijuana and blacks with heroin, and then criminalizing both heavily, we could disrupt those communities. We could arrest their leaders, raid their homes, break up their meetings, and vilify them night after night on the evening news. Did we know we were lying about the drugs? Of course we did. Finally, the Trump administration. Donald Trump has a history of being able to rile up a crowd using only his words. Whether he is speaking about DACA, his plan for a border wall, or his new tax bill, he uses language to spark emotion and fear in the crowd. For example, in one of his speeches regarding border security, he stated, Countless innocent American lives have been stolen because our politicians have failed to do in their duty to secure our borders. By making claims like, drugs are pouring across the border, the U.S. murder rate is up 47%, bad people are flooding our airports, and crooked Hillary should be in prison, is a perfect example of fear inducement. And the fact that he was elected president just shows how much power language has over people. As George Orwell puts it, but if thought corrupts language, language can also corrupt thought. Nearly 180,000 illegal immigrants with criminal records ordered deported from our country, are tonight roaming free to threaten peaceful citizens. The number of new illegal immigrant families who have crossed the border so far this year already exceeds the entire total from 2015. They are being released by the tens of thousands into our communities with no regard for the impact on public safety or resources. One such border crosser was released and made his way to Nebraska. There, he ended the life of an innocent young girl named Sarah Root. She was 21 years old and was killed the day after graduating from college with a 4.0 grade point average, number one in her class. Her killer was then released a second time, and he is now a fugitive from the law. I've met Sarah's beautiful family, but to this administration, their amazing daughter was just one more American life that wasn't worth protecting. No more. The most effective solution to prevent these problems is awareness. One has to educate themselves on the certain aspects of political rhetoric in order to prevent falling victim to those tactics, like pathos. One has to educate the others so that people can catch when politicians are attempting to manipulate them into doing their bidding. If enough people are educated, we will have a more honest and inclusive government that does not preach paranoia and mob mentality. If we do not educate ourselves and take action, then we are letting ourselves fall into a political trap where our emotions are tools that can be manipulated by leaders to control our actions. As George Orwell put it in his essay, Politics in the English Language, political language is designed to make lies sound truthful and murder respectable, and to give an appearance of solidity to pure wind.